Look, I get it. $100 is a lot of money, but in this video, I'm going over some extremely valuable $100 bills that sold for a ton of money, and it's typically the smallest little detail that you need to pay attention to to make sure you aren't missing a rare $100 bill worth a ton of money. So I won't waste any more time in this video. We're going over 31 expensive $100 bills, so let's hop right into this video. So up first, we have a 1934 $100 bill that sold for $5,280. $80, and this is exactly why. On the left hand side of the bill, you'll see a letter I. Now that's going to be important for a future note, so pay attention. But essentially, what that is is the district letter. That means this bill was intended for Minneapolis. That's important because the Bureau of Engraving and Printing printed only so many for specific districts. Now, something important to point out here is that large letter I will always be in correlation with the prefix letter of the serial number. As you can see, the first digit of the serial number is also an I. Now, if those two letters are different, that could be a very rare error with a lot of money. Another thing to pay attention to is if you look around the bill, you'll see four number nines. Now, those are called the district numbers. As we know, I is the ninth letter in the alphabet. So the I and the nine should always correlate, and that should be with every letter. For example, if the district letter was an A, then the number would be a one. If it was a B, it would be two. If it was C, it would be three, so on and so forth. If the number and the letter are ever different, it could be very rare. Next, this is a light green seal bill. Pretty much what that means is you see the green ink. Well, it's light and light green seals are more rare than dark green seals. This is only really important to know on the 1934 bills. Also, this is a star note. I'll run through this very briefly, but essentially a star note occurs when the sheet is being printed at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and there is an error on that sheet. If a quality control manager sees that there's damage or an error on the sheet of bills, what they'll do is they'll mark it with a giant red marker so it could later be destroyed. Once it's destroyed, then they will produce a new sheet of bills and they will add a star at the end of the serial number. This is for bookkeeping purposes and also to prevent any sort of theft happening at the BEP where these bills are produced. The last thing I want to say on this bill is that it was graded by PCGS at a 55 PPQ. PPQ means premium paper quality, which is a good thing and means there is no damage, stains, tears, or anything like that on the bill. Now this bill graded at a 55, which means about uncirculated, and the highest achievable grade is 70. So if this bill would have graded higher, it would have sold for a lot more money than $5,280. One last thing I'll say really quickly is that the first year they ever started producing small size bills like this was 1928. So this is very close to the first year of issue. But let's hop into the next bill. So here we go, a 1928 $100 bill. This one sold for $3,120. And you can see the grade is a 66 EPQ. It is much higher than the previous note. You can see also that this is not a light green seal bill. This is a normal green seal. If you go back, you can see the difference between the color of this green and the previous green. Now, if you haven't noticed already, the district seal does not have a letter, but it has a number. If you have a number like this, it is considered to be a numeral type bill. Most of the time, numeral type paper money is worth more money. So you can see a large number four, and you can see that this is for Cleveland, Ohio, as you can see on the district seal. You will also notice the number fours around the bill. Remember what we said, those numbers should all match. And also the prefix letter for the serial number is the fourth letter of the alphabet, which is D. So everything here matches up just how we want it to be. If those were different, it would be an extremely rare instance, and it could be worth a ton of money if you have one. Another very important factor to understand is that, and this goes for all paper money, just because your bill says a series of 1928 like this one does not mean that's exactly when it was produced. When they're making these plates for the paper money, they don't want to have to change the year every single year they're making paper money. For example, this 1928 bill could have been produced anywhere between 1928 and 1933. Remember, the previous bill is 1934, so that's when they made a new plate and started printing those bills. So again, just because your bill says a date on it does not mean that's when the bill was actually produced. Another important thing to know is that this is a small size bill. So before 1928, they had large size paper money. I'll show you the difference here, much different. But remember, those older bills are still considered to be genuine paper money. So if you have a bill like this, you want to make sure you don't fold it, don't damage it, keep it safe, because it could be worth a lot of money, just like this one that sold for $3,120. This bill sold for $4,560, and here's why. So this is a 2013 $100 bill. Now, a really important area to 
look at here is the serial number. The serial number is what collectors will call an ascending ladder serial number. This is considered to be a fancy serial number, which means that collectors will pay more money for it. Essentially what's happening here is the serial number starts with a number one and ends with a number eight consecutively. This can happen in the reverse order as well, starting with eight, going all the way down to a one. There are many types of fancy serial numbers out there with a ton of money, but this one just so happened to sell for $4,560. Now, another area I want to point out is the fact that this bill was produced at the Fort Worth facility. Now, how do I know that? Well, if you look at the tiny print at the top left hand side of the bill, you'll see a small FW. Now, if it does not have an FW anywhere on the bill, that means the bill was produced at the Washington DC facility. What you need to know is that that small little number and letter is called the front plate number. Now, if you flip the bill over to the back, you will see a small number back there as well. That is called the back plate number. What you need to know is that these numbers are for internal uses for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, so they can see which plate goes with which note. It's for internal uses mainly. There are these notes called mule notes. Now, mule notes essentially are just that, a mule. For those of you that don't know what a mule is, it's a horse and a donkey. So it's a mix of two different things. Now, when it comes to paper money, a mule note essentially means the front of the bill should not have gone with the back of that bill. Now, how do you tell if you have a mule note? Well, the size of the letters on the back will be different than the size of the letter and numbers on the front. Now, here's the thing as well. When it comes to this newer paper money, mule notes are few and far between. That's because the quality control process most of the time is now done by high tech machines that can easily spot if there is an error on that sheet of bills or not. There are some examples in this video of mule notes, and I'll show you exactly what to look for on those. But the main reason why this bill sold for $4,560 is because it's a high graded bill with an ascending ladder serial number. This $100 bill sold for $5,875. And as you can see, this bill was graded by PCGS at a 55 PPQ. That means there is at least one or two folds on this bill. And if it didn't have that, it would have been worth a lot more money. Now, what is a specimen note? Specimen bills like this were given out by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing to different countries around the world who accept US federal currency. The reason why this is important is because these banks around the world needed a genuine bill to compare to. That way, if someone in a different country was to bring in a fake bill, the bank teller would be able to know, hey, I have a genuine example from the US. I know it's real. The example that this customer gave me is fake. That's the beauty of a specimen note. Now, these should have never been out into collector's hands. But as you can see, one thing led to another and the probability of a bank teller selling this at a premium because it's a rare specimen note is more than likely the case. Now, one thing many people don't know about is if you look on the back bottom right hand corner of the bill, you'll see a 1004. That is just the specimen number. Now, a lot of specimen notes actually do not have a specimen number. A lot of it just comes down to internal bookkeeping for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Now, what's stopping someone from just getting a red little stamper and stamping specimen on $100 bills and selling them for nearly $6,000? Well, there's a few things. First of all, if you have a specimen note, I would highly recommend sending it to a third party authentication company like PCGS or PMG. This will make the bill more valuable and give a buyer the confidence knowing that what they're buying is indeed genuine. This will also eliminate any possibility that the bill is fake or that it's altered with a specimen stamp like this. These companies have been around for a long time and know exactly what they're looking at and can tell the difference between an altered and genuine bill. What that means is just real or fake stamp. Another surefire way without sending it off to get graded is the serial number. Now, 99% of the time, pretty much all the specimen notes I've ever seen, they come with a fancy serial number. As you can see, this serial number starts with a two and it ends with a nine. And that is an ascending ladder serial number because it goes from two to nine consecutively. Now, I've seen specimen notes with zeros. I've seen specimen notes with no serial number whatsoever. Pretty much what you need to know is that a specimen note will have a fancy serial number, just like this one that graded by PCGS, a 55 PPQ sold for $5,875. Now, I'll be very brief on this one, but pretty much what this is, is an older type of $100 bill specimen note. You can see the serial number is again ascending, going from two to nine consecutively. This one sold for $7,475. Now, this one was graded by CGA. They're no longer around because they were an unreputable company and they ended up going out of business. So if you ever come across CGA holders, they are more than likely genuine bills, but the grades are probably overinflated like this one. This one got a 68 grade. Remember the highest grade is 70. Not a whole lot to say here. You can see this one 
one does not have a specimen number on the back of it like the previous note did. But regardless, if you have a specimen note and it grades really highly, you're in for a treat because this one sold for $7,475. $7,200 for this $100 bill from 2017. Now remember what I said earlier, just because it says a date on it like 2017 does not mean that's when it was actually produced. This bill could have been produced in 2018 or 2019. But the main reason why it sold for so much money is because one, it graded very highly by PMG at a 66 EPQ. And two, this is a solid number eight serial number. So it's important to know that in different countries like parts of Asia, they find the number eight as a very rare and sought after number. Even if your bill has a few eights, it could be worth money because eight is considered to be a lucky number. Now, if you're in Asia, sometimes you'll see very expensive cars with license plates that have eights on them. That just goes to show how important the number eight is. I can nearly guarantee the cost to get a license plate with number eights on it is extremely high. So again, this is a solid number eight serial number created by PMG 66 EPQ. It sold for $7,200. I won't spend too much time here, but this is a genuine large size $100 bill from 1914. This is what collectors call a red seal federal reserve note. This bill sold for $55,200. On top of all of that, you can see it's pretty worn. It's pretty beat up all around. It's in a fine 15. Now on top of everything I already said, this one got a serial number one. You see it says E, which is the prefix, one, which is the serial number, and A, which is the suffix letter. So that's extremely rare to come by regardless of the grade. If the condition was higher, it would have brought a whole lot more money than $55,200. Now just really quick, I want to show you the size of these large size bills versus the bills that we're used to seeing. Again, this is legal tender. This is 100% genuine. If you took it to a bank legally, they would have to accept it, but I highly advise against it because one, they may tell you that your bill is fake because they just simply don't know the history of things like this. And two, you would be silly to change it in because they would give you literally $100 when in reality, again, this bill sold for $55,200. All right, this bill sold for $16,450. And here's why. This is a 1934B $100 bill from the Kansas City District. So what you need to know here is that the date 1934 can come with no letter afterwards. It can come with an A, a B, or a C. Now, depending on the series your bill came from, which is that little letter after the date there, in combination with the grade and the district it's from, will really come down to how many bills were printed for that specific run. It all comes down to a supply and demand thing. For example, if there weren't that many bills printed for Kansas for the 1934B series, and this is the highest bill graded, it's going to sell for a lot of money. What you need to know is that if you have a bill from 1934, especially especially 1934B, Kansas City like this, and it's in a high graded condition, it could be worth a ton of money because this one sold for $16,450. $28,200 for this $100 bill from 1928. So let's go over it. So first of all, this one got the 65 grade. Now, if you come across a rare bill, the last thing you wanna do is fold it and put it in your purse or wallet. You wanna keep it as flat as possible. If you have nothing to put it in for the time being, you could even put it in a book, just to keep it flat until you get a currency holder. Now make sure you don't forget it because honestly I've purchased a book in the past and found rare currency inside so don't be that person. As we talked about earlier this is a numeral type bill. You can see the number three and then the prefix letter of a C. Everything is good there. Another thing about this bill is that it's a somewhat fancy serial number. You can see there's zeros, ones, and fours. Some collectors will pay more money for a serial number that is fancy like this. Also as I said before this is the first year of issue of a 19 28. So if you have a rare 1928 $100 bill that's in good condition from like Philadelphia district like this one, you could be in for a real treat because it sold for $28,200. This bill sold for $300,000. I won't spend too much time here, but this is an 1882 large size gold certificate bill graded by PMG at a choice fine 15. So if this would have graded higher, it would have brought a ton more money. Now what not many people know about these bills outside of the fact that people just think they're fake is one, they're genuine. And two, back in the day, you could have exchanged this $100 bill for its face value $100 of gold. That's right. Back in the day, you could literally bring gold certificates like this to the bank and get gold in return. It'd be so cool if they did that still. Again, this is legal tender, meaning you could spend it, but there's way more collector value. Again, $300,000 for this one. Another thing to consider is back in the day, only the ultra wealthy could really handle high denomination bills like this because $100 back in the late 1880s, was nearly unheard of 
to carry around. These are highly sought after, and if you have one, it could be worth a ton of money if it's real, just like this bill that sold for $300,000. Now, if you're looking at the front of this bill, there's not too much going on. It sold for $2,280. Now, what's really important to know about the printing process for these $100 bills is the back of the bill is printed first, then the front of the bill is printed, and then the last and final print is the overprint, which is the green seal and serial numbers and the black district seal on the left, along with the district numbers, which are the number eights in this example. So it's not until you flip the bill over to the back where you notice the back is completely missing. So the first print never got printed. I'll keep this very brief, but the reason why you have to send your bill off to a company like PMG is because there are people out there that will try to shave down the back of the bill to make it look like this error and sell it for a lot of money. Grading companies like PMG and PCGS will immediately be able to tell you that the bill is a genuine error or an altered error. What you need to know is that if you have a bill like this, there's a good chance it's real and you should get it graded by a third party company because you could have a bill worth a ton of money just like this one that sold for $2,280. $2,640 for this $100 bill from 1990. Now the back of the bill looks completely fine, but it's not until you flip it over that you can tell something is severely wrong here. That is because this is an insufficient inking error. So during the printing process, there was an error and there's just a lack of ink. Now, what not many people know is that this is a insufficient ink from the magnetic print. So that magnetic ink is a security feature on these bills. Now, what not many people know as well is the fact that each denomination, for example, the one, the two, five, 10, 20, 50, 100, they all have magnetic ink on them, at least the older bills like this one, and they all have different designs. What you need to know is that this is just a security measure that the Bureau of Engraving and Printing puts in place as an added layer of security for the paper money. If you have an insufficient inking error like this person does, then you could have a bill with a lot of money because this one sold for $2,640. Here's a really cool one. So this bill sold for $7,200 and it's the smallest little thing that you probably won't notice that made the difference here. So this is all stuff we know, right? This is a 1928 bill. It's a numeral type. You can see the district number of a 12. You can see the smaller district numbers around the bill of 12. You can also see the prefix of an L. That's the 12th letter of the alphabet. So everything is in alignment there. This is all good. But why would it sell for so much money? It graded by PMG A58 with no EPQ. So this is what it comes down to, guys. We know it's a star note, but you need to look very closely. If you know what it is, pause the video and leave a comment below before I tell you right now. All right, here we go. This is why. So this is what collectors call an inverted star error. I won't spend too much time, but here's a diagram of what it looks like. If you have a star and it's inverted like this, you could have a bill with a ton of money, especially on a 1928 like this one that sold for $7,000. $200. This one sold for $30,550. Now this one's from 1880. It's a legal tender bill. You can see the large spiked seal on the right hand side of the bill. What that is really for is a security measure. That way people wouldn't counterfeit these bills as easily back in the day. Pretty much if you found this bill in this condition of a very fine 20, you're in for a treat. But if it would have graded higher, this bill could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. But because it graded pretty low at a very fine 20, it sold for $30,550. I still love this bill though. This $100 bill sold for $1,880. Now it's not until you flip the bill over to the front that you can see that the bill is misaligned on the front. Now if you remember the back of the bill is printed first and the front of the bill is printed second and then the third and final print is that overprint right in the middle there. So do you know which print was misaligned? You're right. It's the second print that was misaligned. So during the printing process something happened to let this occur because the first and the third print are printed on just perfectly but it's that second print that's all messed up. And that's why this bill sold for $1,880. 30 grand for this bill. I won't spend a lot of time. But this $100 bill is from 1875. And yes, it is indeed a genuine bill. This is what collectors call a national bank note. This one was specifically intended for the first National Bank of Baltimore, Maryland. Such a cool bill here. And you can also see the Declaration of Independence happening on the back there, along with a lot of other beautiful depictions. But if you have a rare national bank note like this, you're in for a real treat guys because this one again sold for $30,000. I'll be very brief here but this $100 bill sold for $223,250. This is a gold certificate from 1928 so we're used to seeing the ones with the green seals. This one is just a gold version of it and if you read the fine print there pretty much it certifies that this is a gold certificate and you could bring this bill into the bank and get $100 worth of gold in return. Such a cool piece of history but the reason why it sold for so much money is because this is a star note as well. Even if it wasn't a star note, it would be worth a lot of money. But the fact that 
it's a star note and it's a gold certificate from 1928 allowed this bill to sell for $223,250. This 1929 bill sold for $66,000, guys. Now, something to keep your eyes peeled on on any bank note is if you have a birthday serial number like this one. So this bill, as you can see in the serial number, says 1998. Now, that is a year that people were born. And some people that were born in 1998 would love to have this bill in their collection. That could have a little bit of the reason why it sold for so much money. But the biggest thing on this one is the fact that it graded by PMG at a 65 EPQ. As you can see here, this is from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, Illinois. This is also a star note, which is super hard to get on these Federal Reserve Bank notes. And as you can, and lastly, you can see this is a brown seal and serial number bill. This is typical for these Federal Reserve Bank notes. You can get these in all different districts, not just Chicago. But the main reason why is because the grade and the star, that's why it's sold for $66,000, $228,000, just so much money. This is an 1863 compound interest treasury note. These are so incredibly hard to come by. I've been lucky enough to actually hold a few of these in my lifetime, but a beautiful example of a genuine bill. As you can see, a full body portrait there of George Washington, which is very uncommon. Typically, you just see his face in a lot of portraits. There's also the gold stamped overprint on this bill that bleeds back a little bit on the back of the bill. What you need to know is that if you're lucky enough to come across a compound interest treasury note like this, you've hit the mother load because this one that graded by PMG, a very fine 30 EPQ, sold for $228,000. Now back to something we're a bit more used to seeing here. This is a 2017 $100 bill that sold for $1,920. So let me know in the comment down below what you think as to why this bill sold for this much money. Let me know. Okay, well, if you haven't noticed already, this is a descending ladder serial number. That means the bill started with a seven and it goes all the way down to a zero consecutively. Now the serial number could start with a nine and eight or a seven, just as long as the serial number gets low in the correct order. Now this bill could have had a different type of serial number that was rare and it could have brought a lot of money that way as well. But remember guys, if you find a bill like this, you got to keep it safe. Do not fold it because it will decrease the value if you do fold it and you don't want that to happen. Again, 1920 bucks, $2,750 for this $100 bill. This one is from 1928. It is for the San Francisco district, as you can see with that number 12 there on the left. This is a numeral type bill, as we know. Guys, this one graded by PMG at a 65 EPQ. That's five points away from the perfect grade of 70. Now, it, just to put things into perspective, it is so challenging to get this high of a grade from a bill that's nearly 100 years old. When we're talking about coins, it's a little bit different. They're more sturdy and stable, but paper money is much more fragile and brittle overall. The fact that nobody even folded this bill is mind boggling. But if you find one like this, then you could be in for a real treat because this one sold for $2,750. Not spending a ton of time on this bill that sold for $32,200. Let me know in the comments below if you like me going over these large bills. It seems like if I make a video on just large size bills, people aren't as interested. So I try to weave them in a bit here, but I just love the artwork and beauty on these $100 bills and the fact that most people think something like this is fake when that is not the case. So let me run through this briefly. This is a 1902 $100 bill for the Pacific National Bank of Los Angeles, California. The charter number of that specific bank was 12,454. Now the US made paper money for national banks all across the US starting from charter number one all the way up to I believe in the 14,000s. So that's quite a few banks. But on top of all that, this is a serial number six bill. You can see that the serial number is just a number six. Even if your bill is not a number six like this, it could be worth a lot of money and it could be worth even more money if the seal, charter number, and serial number are red because those red seal notes are typically worth more money. Guys, again, keep your eyes peeled for rare national bank notes like this one that sold for $32,200, $1,997 for this $100 bill from 1934. You can see there's a D after that number 1934 there. Like I said before, depending on how many were produced for that specific series will dictate how much demand there is for that specific note. This one was graded by PMG at a 66 EPQ. Now, how do you get a high grade like this? We understand that you don't want to have any folds or dents or damage on the bill, but when it comes to getting a very high grade from 64 to 70, it really comes down to the centering of the margins. So you can see the white border all the way around. Well, the more centered it is, the higher grade you can get. That applies for both the front and the back of the bill. As we can see, the district letter here is a letter F, which you see in the prefix of the serial number, as well as the district 
district number, which are those sixes around the bill. So everything correlates there because F is the sixth letter in the alphabet. Now, if you have a bill just like this and it's in good condition, what you're going to want to do is get the opinion of at least three different people before selling the bill because it may be worth getting graded like this person did and allowed it to sell for $1,997, $81,000 for this bill. Now, we went over one of these 1880 legal tender bills earlier, but it was in much worse condition. This is the power of a high graded bill. You can see there's no EPQ, which means that there is some sort of issue with the paper that makes it not exceptional. A beautiful piece of history right here with this genuine bill that sold for $81,000. $1,800 for this really beat up bill that graded at a fine 12. So again, this is a numeral type bill. You can see the large number five there on the left hand side of the bill. One of the main reasons honestly on this bill is it's from 1928 and it's a star note. Now some of these star notes from the earlier series just generally have lower serial numbers because they did not produce that many of them back in the day. Now it goes without saying how beat up this bill is and how much money it would have brought if it was in better condition. The thing is back in the day they didn't think something like this would actually be worth a lot of money one day. So they just spent it and used it even though back then $100 was a ton of money. Guys if you have a $100 bill from 1928 and it looks just like this one it could be worth over $1,800 especially if it's in good graded condition. $1,020 bucks for this $100 bill from 2017 series. Not a whole lot to say here. This one was graded by PMG at a 68 EPQ which is such a high grade guys. If you're somehow able to achieve a 68 grade then good for you because that's a really really challenging grade to hit but as you can see the margins of this bill are pretty well centered all the way around. The main reason why this bill sold for so much money is because it has a rare serial number starting with a one a bunch of zeros and ending with a number five at the end there. If you have a rare serial number bill like this it may be worth getting graded and selling it because this one sold for $1,020. $1,320. Now this is a mule note guys I told you about this mule note earlier on and now we finally made it to the mule note. This one was graded by PCGS at a 66 PPQ. Biggest thing guys you need to look out for on here is the mule note occurring. Now remember what I said before to see if you have a mule note on one of these older bills you have to look at the size of the back plate number in comparison with the size of the front plate number. Now if they are different sizes then that means you have a mule note and mule notes can really be worth a lot of money especially if there's a star at the end of the serial number. This is not a star note not a replacement note but it is a mule note as PCGS signifies there on the label and because it graded so highly and it's a mule note it sold for $1,320. I really love these confederate notes. This one sold for $37,375. A lot of the time you'll see the back of these bills are simply blank. There's nothing on them but you will see some transcripts sometimes where people will write with a fountain pen. This is just a beautiful $100 bill. Now something to take into consideration is a lot of lower denomination confederate currency is not worth a ton of money and there are a lot of counterfeits out there. What you should know is that this is a genuine bill that sold in auction and it's so challenging to find these bills. Now a lot of confederate currency they printed so much of it and after the confederate war it was pretty much useless. People would actually burn the money and they would also use it as wallpaper in their homes. This is how useless it was. Today it's not as useless because there's a lot of collector value with it. Serial numbers don't really matter as much. You can see this says 918. Unless it's a serial number one it's not really going to add any value simply because they didn't produce that many of them back in the day. If you have a Montgomery Confederate States of America paper money bill $100 bill you could be in for a real treat because this one sold for $37,375. Actually very similar here to the previous note we had this one graded by PMG at a 69 APU. That's only one point away from the perfect grade of 70. You can also see this bill has a serial number of 10000006A. Again a pretty fancy serial number. Now if that last digit was a 1 instead of a 6 that would make this bill worth a whole lot more money but again it's still a rare bill and it sold for $1,020. $998.75 for this $100 bill with a solid number 4 serial number. If you have a bill with a fancy serial number it's probably going to be worth sending off to get graded. This one was graded by PCGS at a 64. Now as always if the grade is higher than this it's going to bring more money. Not a whole lot to say on this bill honestly. It's just a pretty cool serial number. Again remember that the 8s are typically worth more money. I actually believe 4 is an unlucky number in the Asia culture but I could be wrong there. Don't quote me. But if these were 8s it would have brought a whole lot more money than 
$100,000.75. This $100 bill sold for $30,550. Now this is a large size silver certificate. So again, back in the day, you could have brought this $100 bill to the bank and gotten an equal amount back in silver, which not many people know actually existed. Again, there weren't that many people that were carrying around $100 bills like this because back then $100 was a ton of money, which honestly it still is today. This 1891 silver certificate $100 bill graded by PMG at a 25 sold for $30,550. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.